You mentioned ethics, you mentioned bias, you mentioned all of these things that are very important. I really think that the next frontier for trust and safety professionals would be the world of AI. And it is, like you mentioned, something that is at its infancy. So it's still growing up. We don't have standardized frameworks. We don't have ways that uh, you know, platform companies like your Facebooks, your YouTubes, your TikToks of the world have come together and said, here's what we're going to align on and here's what we're going to allow and not allow on the on our platforms. But with AI, you can follow some of the same framework, but most of it is uncharted territory. Um, so I'd love to I'd love to hear your thoughts on this a little bit more since you're you're kind of trained to uh, and your experience is more around like how can a bad actor use this technology in a malicious way and how can I protect the business interest and then human interest? So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Yes. Um, Lucas, I, I love the free flowing conversation. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that. So before I answer your question, something else sparked in me, right? Um, and, and I'm itching to um, say it cause I'm going to lose my train of thought. Here, here, here's the thing. Um, here, here's the thing I, I wanted to um, talk about. So, when we when we talk about regulation and technology, typically regulation is two steps behind tech, right? Because um, you want innovation. You, you regulators don't fully understand or appreciate um, enough to regulate, right? So you, there's there's never a, a case where um, regulation is steps ahead of tech it, it, you know you, you always have technology and then regulation follows and like you mentioned some countries are faster to adapt some countries are slower some of it is by design some of it is not by design but here is what's interesting so do you remember a few years back there was um universal agreement to not allow human cloning um, I, I don't know how much you, you like yeah. you researched into this it, it's fascinating right um, what is fascinating is um, the fact that almost all countries agreed on something, um, and that's not usually the case. Um, but there was a case to be made where, um, you know, we, we, we want to be able to harvest organs. We want to be able to sustain human life. Um, immortality is, is one of humankind's longtime quests, and 3D printing hasn't advanced enough to be able to regenerate organs, although that's that's fascinating for me. But then everybody agreed that human cloning is is not is is is, is, is even though the technology is available, we don't want to be doing it because it creates um, a, a very inequitable world where we're going to have poor countries start to clone to supply to people who are able to buy you know organs. And so that's interesting, right? Sometimes technology is there but it, it could create um, disequity or it, and, and, it, and everybody agreed to that. Now let's, let's switch to AI for a minute, right? Here is again, a technology that could be extremely, extremely disruptive um, that if put in the wrong hands could, could cause anarchy, could cause disorder. Um, you could perhaps, um, you know, without the right safety nets in place, um, and like I said, it, with the right questions, you press the right buttons, you perhaps could get the right answers. And no tech platform can claim that it has the, the, the most exhaustive guardrails in place, right? Uh -huh. so, so just to give you an example, you can, you can today ask AI how to make a bomb. It, it probably won't give you an answer. Right. But if you were to frame the question differently and say, OK, what happens if I mix X acid and X acid, it probably will give you the formula to make a bomb. And, and if you're a chemist or if you are, if you know, if you have some fundamental knowledge about this, you could still elicit answers from from AI. So so there is or perhaps, Lucas, imagine 
a situation where people will start to use AI without sufficient training and, and start to conduct surgeries on their own or self-medicate or, you know, create the, the, the next um, drug addiction, create the next, I don't know, uh, meth. So, 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 so it's, it's, my mind explodes because there are n number of use cases in how this technology could be misused, right? With the wrong intent. I'm not as much afraid of unintentional consequences. I'm more afraid yeah. of malicious use, right? Yeah. And, and so this is, this is where I feel like it's, um, it's collective responsibility of all, of all the, the trust and safety professionals of people who are trained to, to think about risks, to start to think about what sort of guardrails do we need to have in place or imagine um, malicious use of AI to be doing things which you wouldn't, um, w which you wouldn't um, even have imagined. So, so this is where I, I think um, trust and safety professionals need to step in and need to start thinking about um, how do you how do you um, how do you design um, for safety guardrails, or how do you start to think about um, red teaming, if I can use that expression, um, to be able to course correct um, in good time. So, so I think you know th this is where um, I, I don't think even trust and safety professionals are ready for this, and it will take mm. some time and collective effort and intent to be able to um, solve for this. So you're saying our best bet on this is let's combine our brain powers, let's align on positive human intent, and let's find the solution together instead of trying to do it on our own. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's yes. It's, it, it's something that's been, I've been thinking about it a lot because I, I can just, I can just see the potential and I can see the, you know, having worked in trust and safety, you know, there are people that are leading right now in the field and have been involved either with red teaming, these kind of, uh, new versions that are coming out or actively working with their, in their own organizations. But m mostly it's, it's blue field. Like it's, it's it's wide open and it's unknown. Yes. So I think it's, it's scary, but if I look at it from a professional, um, development, it's also incredibly exciting and very rewarding. Um, remember we spoke about prompt libraries before, right? Yeah. Um, there, there is a, a very fledgling, but growing industry around prompt blacklists, if, if you were to believe me, right? Um, again, it's not as big as, you know, people sharing information about the right kind of prompts, but within the trust and safety space, there's already a very, very small, um, but, you know, set of professionals who are, share, who are basically sharing what sort of prompts um, are likely to result in, um, you know, AI providing answers, but you don't want it to be providing, right? And so I, I think that is that is very fascinating. Um, and we need mm. to grow that tribe of people um, who are doing adversarial testing, like you mentioned, red teaming, adversarial testing, um, or even, you know, common prompt engineers who are discovering things which, which they shouldn't, and they're sharing it in public interest.